Hey there, it's Sam here from BMT School of Music and today I'm going to be showing you how to play Wild Thing by the Trogs. This is a real sort of classic party trick show off guitar riff. Um, one that, like many simple guitar riffs, can be done badly and can be done really well and you'll find a lot of people will be able to play this and it might be slightly incorrect, it might be in a different key, it might not even use what we call chords. But I'm going to show you the simplest way that's going to be really, really effective to show this off to all your friends and family. So I'll give you a little demo first. I'm playing this on electric guitar today. I'm also going to demo it with distortion on the amp as well. However, if you're playing with an acoustic guitar, totally fine. Um, I'm going to be using a pick, but I am also going to talk through the different technique that you can use if you are opting to use your fingers or your fingers and thumb. Uh, so here it is. <laughs> If you're looking at my left hand it may look like I'm barely doing anything at all and that's because I am actually doing a slightly more advanced technique which is left hand string muting. This is not something I'm going to cover for today uh, but what we find as a guitarist with more experience in playing is that you tend to add these things quite instinctively and so I'm now going to demonstrate without that left hand muting you may hear a slight little bit more noise particularly in between the chords. So here we go. So you'll probably see now that the riff uses one finger and it uses something called open power chords. So uh, I'm going to work you through the three different open power chords in this song. I'm going to do them in a slightly unusual order and not in the order that they're actually done in the song. So the first one I'm going to start off with is this one, which is what we call E or an E power chord. So remember that term, power chord, is my terrible um, on-screen writing, which I've still not got the hang of after having a touchscreen laptop for four years, I think, uh, you may see it written as just E5, so that either way that will mean power chord. And so if we just clear that a second, if we look here again, what we have is an open E string, which is the thickest string on the guitar, so this one here, the one nearest to your face, and then what we also have is the second fret on the A string, which is this one here, so that's fret two on that A string. Let me just demo that a little bit closer up. So that fret two on the A string. So you have those two notes. You've got an open E, so completely open, you're doing nothing with it. And you've got two on the A string, and you're doing that like that. And what we've got to do is hit both notes together. One thing that I've seen students do quite often is their brain will automatically be drawn towards the string that their finger is on. So what I mean by that is I'm holding my finger here on the second fret of the A string. The chord uses two strings, including an open string. I need to pick these two. So you see that I'm picking that with my right hand, with my guitar pick. It makes a really cool power chord sound. But like I say, some people's brain automatically draws them towards the string that their finger is on. So that means that their finger will go there, their pick will go there, and then they'll only hit one note. It's a nice sounding note, but it doesn't sound the same as the open power chord. Like that. That's really cool. If you put distortion on, if you're fortunate enough to be playing on electric guitar, just that one chord sounds really great and it's in many, many, many songs. So hopefully that has covered that first chord for you, the open E power chord. And I hope you're hammering away on that now and having loads of fun with that. Uh, the other two chords are basically exactly the same, but they are just moved one string towards the floor or up in pitch as we would call it. So that next one is the A power chord or open A power chord. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to have an open A string, which is this string here, and I'm going to fret two on the D string. So see I've just got those two strings like that. Exactly the same chord, just one string towards the floor or what we call up in pitch because it's going higher in pitch. This one's lower. This one's higher. So sometimes we say go up a string. We mean that way. That's the A power chord, the open A power chord. Third chord is the open D power chord. Again, 
just shifting one string higher. I've taught these in a funny order. I've taught them not in the order of the song. I've taught them from the lowest to the highest one. So that D is open D string, and then two on the G string. So it's those two notes together. So now you have your open E, your open A, and your open D. Very quickly going to draw what they will look like if I tab those out. Let's say I do the tab strings in black. One, two, three, four, five, six strings. And I'm going to do the notes in blue. So this would be the E power chord, which is written as E5. This one would be the A power chord, which is A5. And this one would be the D power chord, which is D5. By the way, if you are picking these chords up by watching me do them in the video, E, A, D, and you're not really too sure what's going on with the tab, that's totally fine, because at the end of the day, all the remats is that you sound good. But what I would advise is that you try and reverse engineer. So you try and look at that tab and go backwards and try and see if you can figure out how that tab represents what you're playing on the guitar. Equally, what you might have found is that you couldn't quick it up, pick it up quite so quickly from just watching me, but the tab really, really helps. Either is absolutely fine. So you've now got your three chords and now we're going to put them together into the song. Once you've got the technique, it's pretty easy just putting the chords in the right order and getting the rhythm. Uh, one thing I haven't gone over yet is a picking technique or a plucking technique if you are not using a pick. So a uh, very common thing that people do if they're using a plectrum is they pick either not enough strings or too many strings, one or the other. So especially younger players, here's commonly what they will do is they will hold the pick quite tight and they'll very much use their elbow to move. Now what we get is a, what do you call this, a trajectory of angle or something like that. So if I move a tiny bit with my elbow, that actually ends up being quite a lot by the time it reaches my finger. So imagine if you've got a really, really long stick and you move it like a centimetre at the end where your hand is, it's going to move it quite a lot on the other end if you're pivoting it. So we need to move from the wrist. We need to pick from the wrist. And the best way to always think about picking is that it's like writing. And when you're writing, if you rest your palm of your hand on the paper, then, or whatever you're writing on, uh, it's always a lot more stable. So for me personally, what I'll quite often do is I will have these fingers touching the body of the guitar, and then I'll move from the wrist, gentle movement, and what we want is that movement to go down and out. So down and out, and that is so that you don't hit the other strings. So some people, what they'll do is they'll hit too many. And as I'm picking through those three chords, you can't really hear any difference between them. Or, They'll have a pick too tight and they'll kind of get one string like that. Of course, that's really hard to get very accurate. So that's the biggest tip is holding the fingers on the body of the guitar. Just gentle movements like that. If you are not using a pick, so if you're using your fingers, to be honest, at this stage, it's easier. Now, that is not to say that using your fingers makes playing the guitar easier. Generally, the status quo is that with a modern guitar method, you'll usually use a pick. Many reasons, I'm not going to go into in too much detail, but this song, at this stage, which is level one, it can be easier to do this with your fingers. If you're already doing well with the pick, don't, don't put the pick down now. Push your picking technique forward, okay? But finger and thumb. So what we have for the E power chord, for example, is you're going to pick the E note, stick your string with your thumb, and you're going to pluck the A string, the next one, it's on the fret two of the A string. You're going to pick that with your finger. I call it grabby pinch. So finger and thumb both together. Like that, fingers resting here on the body of the guitar. You gotta make sure that both notes are the same volume. So you're plucking them with the same amount of pressure. Don't pick like harder with your thumb. Your E's gonna be louder. Uh, also, you need to make sure that you're doing this. What I call thumbs up. So thumb is going like this. And that means that when your thumb plucks downwards, doesn't bash into your first finger. And when your first finger plucks upwards, doesn't bash into your thumb. So then they're going like this. Can you see that? Like that. Don't do that. I even see professional guitarists doing that at Glastonbury on TV. And they sound amazing. I still think you shouldn't really do that. 
this is always better. Actually, it's, it's uh, originated from a classical guitar technique as well. So, And Mark Knopfler, my favorite guitarist who doesn't use a pick, does it. It's not that often that people do it that way. Even if you're on Glastonbury on the TV. So that's how you get your E, your A, and your D. And you might be thinking, when's the tune coming? Uh, as I do in many of my video lessons, I'm always preparing you for the tools. So you've got the chords, you've got the picking technique, and hopefully now you're ready to do kind of like the last stage really, which is doing the song. So if I click up the tab, we're gonna begin by sequencing or note bashing through the song. So the first part, you play A twice. Second part, you play D twice. Notice the rhythm was different there. Third part, you play E twice. Fourth part, you play D twice. It's got what you call an alternating rhythm. It's ba 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 ba. So think of this as two longer notes, ba ba, a little gap, and then two quicker notes, ba ba. And that's the easiest way to think of that rhythm without going through any theory or sight reading. So it's bum bum ba 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 ba. But that rhythm being two parts, two slower notes and two quicker notes. The chord changes in between. So it's A, A, D, 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 D. So you must have that sound in your head as you're playing this tune. And this is only the first bar. And you've got to get really quick at changing between those two chords. And you can see that I'm reverting to a more advanced technique where I'm doing the left hand muting and my right hand is actually quite loose. Uh, if I was using more like a level one technique, it would look and sound a little bit more like this. You know, maybe the notes are ringing a little more. This is very, very little movement in that right hand. Like that. Remember earlier how I said about a lot of people when they're using a pick, their pick goes towards the finger on the left hand. So you have to try and imagine that when your left and your right hand are moving together, they're kind of moving up and down together, but you've got to remember that the pick is kind of slightly lower in pitch, closer to your face than the chord. So the chord is like there, let's note the chord's there. The pick is actually here. You see, so we're playing A, it just it's kind of a slight angle. All right, second bar, and then we're sort of, we're all done, really. So second bar, two A's, two D's, that's exactly the same rhythm as before. And then what we've got here is a six note rhythm with the E chord that goes like this. Now they're all quick notes there, six of them. You can count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the key thing to understand is that they're all the same speed as I said. There's a little gap between the fourth and the fifth. So if we went one, two, three, four, five, six, that's me counting like all in one go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now if I pause slightly after four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I clap it, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I play it with my E chord, one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got to get that rhythm. A lot of people, they just play stuff. They see this and they go, oh, there's six E chords. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, their practice ends up uh, with a tune that sounds like it slows down when it's hard and it speeds up when it's easy. And if I if I looked at this tab here, we would expect to slow down here, 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 and here, here, and we'd expect to go quite fast here. You don't want that. You just want whatever the rhythm is in the song, whatever the song sounds like. Yes, it does pause, but it pauses less here than it does here. You have to you have to listen to the song really carefully to do that. That's the first bar, here's the second bar. And again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that is how you play Wild Thing by the Trogs. I'm gonna finish the lesson just by uh, giving you a little rendition. We're gonna be doing it with Rock Guitars Distortion.
enjoyed that. I hope you're already on your way to uh, making that riff sound absolutely awesome. Take care, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.